to Becky Cortino Live. I'm an author, an international speaker, and currently writing a book on forgiveness. In writing this book, which is been the most amazing project I've ever worked on so far of the books that I've written, I have uncovered some interesting techniques people have used for uh, employing forgiveness, giving forgiveness to people. And before I get into this, I want to welcome Richard and Marty and Mitzi. It's so good to see you here tonight. and Thank you for joining me. I hope that you'll enjoy this. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed putting these together and it's great to see you all. Um, wanted to just share a little bit about various patterns that I have uncovered and discovered that people actually use when they are attempting to work through forgiveness. I found four that I wanted to share with you tonight. One is kind of a holding pattern. You know, it's kind of the, the wait mode, right? Not sure what quite we're waiting for. Um, something, just waiting, we're good, we'll wait. We'll wait and see what happens, right? Well, let's just see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's good. Things have come down. Let's wait. See if any of these others might seem familiar to you as well. There's nonsensical justification. That's trying to make sense of something that just doesn't make sense, right? Something, sorting something out that if you could make sense of it, you would if you could. And, and maybe if you could make sense of it, everything would be all right. Everything's going to be okay then, right? Because we can figure it out. We got the answer. We can move on. Then there's hands-free forgiveness. That's kind of um, granted autopilot style, automagically. It's kind of invisible, but you did it, right? And then there's the deep dive thinking. That's another technique that I've seen a lot. And maybe some of these are familiar to you. Maybe you've seen them in use somewhere along the way. But deep dive thinking is trying to understand everything, trying to figure out the who, what, when, where, why. If we could just make sense, if we could just figure this out, if I could just understand why this person did this, then we could move on. We could move on to forgiveness. We could, we could move from this place, right? Well, these patterns and others, and you may think of others or have seen other patterns that people will use in forgiveness of other people when they are trying to work through the forgiveness process, actually become sort of a self-inflicted obstacle, if you will, because it doesn't move you any closer. In fact, what it does is it holds you back if you're in a holding pattern and you're trying to figure out what doesn't make sense, right? or trying to understand something that you could maybe never figure out or will never be able to figure out. So that's really what it is. And all of these patterns that I talked with you about so far tonight, and you may know of others, are actually really control issues. And I think a lot of the problems in the world, and if you think about it, a lot of the problems in the world could be solved if the control issues would be solved because control issues are everywhere. But this keeps us actually in a safe place because really forgiveness is kind of a daunting process. There's a lot involved in it, but I wanted to share with you tonight that really forgiveness is extending grace to someone who's done something wrong. And actually the wrongdoing is known and it's owned because it's associated with that person. And this grace is given out to someone with an open hand by the person who was perpetrated upon or that the, the act was done to uh, and, and actually offering their grace and forgiveness for that. And it's offered in a way and from a place of love and in a way that they're not asking for something back and in fact don't expect anything back and probably that person never expected to ever receive that and they'll probably be very surprised if they would be confronted in that way and confronted in a, a kind way not a, a harsh way but in offering forgiveness to somebody to take that forgiveness and be released from that place because everyone not just the person who's trying to figure it all out so they can forgive or move on from this place but you know even the person who did the thing <laughs> that happened 
they're still there too. They're still there. So this is part of what forgiveness is about. We were talking about trying to understand about what forgiveness is about. But I think it's also really important to understand what forgiveness is not. So I hope that tomorrow you'll join me for my next Becky Cortino Live and let's talk about what forgiveness is not so we can move forward in a place that we at least understand a little bit about what it is and what it's, what it's not and then hopefully be able to work toward a restoration. This has been a really interesting process for me and I, I hope that this is interesting to you. I've learned a lot uh, with the various people I've talked to and the things that I've been studying about and writing about. And if you're interested in reading more about what I've written on forgiveness, it's not excerpts from the book, please do visit my website, beckycortino.com. And also, if you'd like to get updates on my upcoming book on forgiveness, there's a link there you can sign up. Thank you so much, Star and Mitzi and others who've been here tonight. It's been great to be joined by you all. I wish I could have called you out as we were, as I was sharing this with you. I wanted to just provide this in the quickest format that I can so that you can get a sound bite of uh, what I've been writing about and learning about and want to share with you too. And I hope that it encourages you and inspires you. And I appreciate so much your joining tonight and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.